Hello and welcome. I'm Sophia, and with me is James. We're so excited to help you learn English today. How are you, James? Hi, Sophia. I'm great, and I'm really looking forward to this. Today, we're talking about how conversations can help you learn English quickly. You know, speaking with people is one of the best ways to learn a language. Absolutely, and when we talk about conversations, we mean real, simple conversations that you can have every day. It doesn't have to be a long or difficult talk. Even small talks, like saying hello to your neighbor or asking for directions, can help you practice. Exactly. These small moments give you a chance to listen and speak, which is so important. You hear how native speakers use words, phrases, and sentences. It helps you understand how the language works in real life. Yes, and don't worry about making mistakes. Learning a language is about trying. The more you try, the better you get. So if you don't know how to say something, just ask. For example, if you're in a cafe and you don't know how to order a coffee, you can ask, how do I say that in English? That's a great idea. It's also important to listen carefully when other people speak. This helps you learn new words and improve your pronunciation. Do you remember the first time you tried speaking in a new language? Oh yes, I do. I was nervous at first, but I kept practicing, and it got easier with time. I think many people feel that way when they're learning English. But over time, you gain confidence and conversations become fun. Right, and conversations are not just about speaking, they're also about listening. When someone talks, you need to listen carefully and try to understand. Even if you don't know every word, you can often understand the main idea. Yes, listening is a key part of learning English. And don't worry if you don't catch every word. You can always ask, can you say that again, please? Or what does that mean? This helps you learn more and shows that you're interested in the conversation. That's so true. And another great tip is to repeat what you hear. If someone says, I like coffee, you can say, oh, you like coffee, me too. It's a simple way to practice. I love that. It's like playing a game. You listen, repeat, and add something of your own. For example, I like coffee can turn into, I like coffee, but I prefer tea. This helps you practice different words and ideas. Exactly. And you don't have to talk about big or difficult things. You can talk about the weather, what you did today, or what you're going to eat for lunch. These small, everyday topics are great for practice. Yes, even talking about what you see around you helps. If you're walking outside, you can talk about what you see. The sky is blue, that tree is tall, or I see a dog. And don't forget to ask questions, too. Questions are a great way to keep the conversation going. You can ask, what do you think? Or do you like this? Or even simple questions like, what time is it? That's right. And when you ask questions, it shows that you're interested in what the other person is saying. This makes the conversation more fun for both people. Yes, and it's a great way to make friends, too. People love it when you show interest in their ideas and experiences. So, use conversations not just to learn English, but to connect with others. Absolutely. And remember, learning English doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, but if you practice every day, even with small conversations, you'll get better and better. Yes, it's all about practice. And the more you practice, the more confident you'll become. So, don't be shy. Start a conversation, ask questions, and most importantly, have fun with it. So, in our last chat, we talked about how important it is to practice English by having conversations, even small ones. Now, let's dig deeper into how to keep those conversations going and make them more helpful for your learning. That's a good point. It's not just about starting a conversation, it's also about learning how to keep it going. One thing that helps is following up on what someone says. For example, if someone tells you they went to the park, you can ask, oh, what did you do at the park? It's a way to show interest and learn more. 
Yes, and when you follow up like that, it keeps the conversation alive. Asking questions like, how was it? Or did you go alone? Let's the other person share more and you can learn new words as they speak. It's a natural way to expand your vocabulary without even realizing it. Exactly. I think a lot of learners feel like they need to know everything before they start talking, but that's not true at all. Conversations are like puzzles you can start with just a few pieces, and you slowly add more as you go. You don't need all the pieces at the beginning. It's okay to learn as you talk. That's such a great analogy. It's okay to be missing a few pieces, and you can always ask for help when you're stuck. For instance, if you don't know how to say a word, just say, I don't know the word in English. Can you help me? Most people are happy to help. And that's something I think learners should remember. Native speakers don't expect you to be perfect. In fact, most people love it when someone is learning their language. They're usually very patient and helpful. That's so true. And speaking of patience, Another thing to remember is that it's okay to take your time during a conversation. If you need a moment to think of the right word or phrase, don't worry. You can say something like, let me think for a second, or how do I say this? It's completely normal to pause and gather your thoughts. Yes, taking your time is important. Sometimes, learners feel like they have to speak really fast to keep up, but that's not necessary. It's better to speak slowly and clearly than to rush and make mistakes. And remember, the person you're speaking to will understand that you're learning, so they won't mind if you take a moment to think. Absolutely. And another tip for keeping conversations going is to agree or disagree politely. When someone shares their opinion, you can agree by saying, I think so too, or that's true. If you don't agree, you can say, I see what you mean, but I think, or I'm not sure I agree with that, but this makes the conversation more interesting and helps you practice expressing your thoughts. That's a great tip, Sophia. Agreeing and disagreeing is a big part of real conversations, and it's a skill that helps you build confidence. It's also a way to learn how different phrases work in different situations. For example, saying, that's a good point, when you agree, or I'm not sure about that, when you don't, makes the conversation feel more natural. Yes, and it's also a great way to practice using polite language, which is important in English. Even when we disagree, we often use soft language to keep the conversation friendly. So instead of saying, no, you're wrong, you can say, I don't quite agree, but I understand your point, it's a subtle difference but it makes the conversation smoother. Exactly. Being polite helps in any language, but it's especially important in English because it's part of how we show respect and kindness in conversations. Even simple words like please, thank you, and excuse me go a long way in making your conversations feel natural and friendly. And speaking of politeness, another thing that's really helpful when learning English is active listening. This means really focusing on what the other person is saying, not just waiting for your turn to talk. When you listen carefully, you can respond better, and it also helps you improve your understanding of the language. Yes, active listening is key. You can show that you're listening by nodding, smiling, or using short phrases like I see, that's interesting, or really. These small responses show the other person that you're engaged and it makes them want to keep talking to you. Exactly. And when you listen actively, you'll also notice new vocabulary or phrases that you can use later. If someone says something you don't understand, don't be afraid to ask, what does that mean? This is a great way to learn new words and it shows that you're paying attention. And don't worry if you don't understand everything right away. Sometimes it's okay to focus on the main idea rather than every single word. For example, if someone is telling a story and you miss a word, try to understand the overall meaning. You can always ask for clarification later. Yes, focusing on the general idea is important. If you get to caught up in every single word, you might feel stressed and that can make it harder to enjoy the conversation. 
But if you relax and focus on understanding the main points, it becomes much easier. That's a good point. And you know, learning through conversations isn't just about speaking with native speakers. You can practice with other learners, too. Even if both of you are still learning, you can help each other improve. Sometimes it's less stressful because you're both in the same boat. Exactly. When you practice with another learner, you can take turns being the listener and the speaker. You can help each other when you don't know a word or when you make a mistake. It's a great way to build confidence together. And don't forget, technology is your friend. There are so many apps and online platforms where you can find language partners from around the world. You don't even have to be in the same country to have a conversation. Yes, that's a great way to get more practice. And when you use technology, you can have conversations through text, voice, or even video calls. It's a flexible way to practice in different situations. That's right, and the more you practice, the more comfortable you'll become. Soon, you'll start noticing that conversations feel easier and you'll be able to express your thoughts more naturally. Yes, it all comes down to practice and patience. Every conversation is a chance to improve, even if it's just a few minutes long. And remember, learning a language is a journey. It doesn't have to be perfect, but every step you take helps you get closer to fluency. Well said, the more you practice, the more confident you'll become in using English every day. So, don't be afraid to start a conversation, even a simple one can help you learn and grow. So far, we've talked about starting conversations, following up with questions, and using polite language to keep things flowing smoothly. Now, let's take it further and focus on how to get the most out of your conversations when learning English. It's not just about talking, it's also about making sure you're learning something new each time. That's right, every conversation is an opportunity to learn something, whether it's new vocabulary, better pronunciation, or even just gaining confidence. But how can you make sure you're learning the most from these conversations? One thing I like to suggest is to set small goals before each conversation. That's a great tip. Setting goals gives you something to focus on. For example, maybe you want to practice using a specific word or phrase, or you want to improve how you ask questions. Having a small goal helps you stay focused and makes the conversation more meaningful. Exactly. And your goal doesn't have to be big. It could be as simple as using a new word you've learned, or maybe you want to practice asking how are you. In a few different ways, for example, instead of just saying how are you, you could also ask how's it going or how have you been. This helps expand your language skills in a natural way. Yes, and I think it's important to remember that goals should be realistic. Don't put too much pressure on yourself to speak perfectly. Focus on making small improvements in each conversation. Maybe today you want to learn two new words. Tomorrow, you can focus on using them correctly in a sentence. That's a really good point. Small steps lead to big progress over time. And speaking of learning new words, another helpful technique is to take notes during or after your conversations. If you hear a new word or phrase, write it down. Later, you can look it up or ask someone what it means and then practice using it in your next conversation. Yes, writing things down helps reinforce what you've learned. You can keep a small notebook with you or even use your phone to jot down new words or phrases. And if you hear a word you don't understand during the conversation, don't be afraid to ask, what does that mean? Or can you explain that word? Exactly. Asking questions is a great way to learn, and most people are happy to explain. And once you know the meaning of the word, try to use it right away. This will help you remember it better. For example, if someone teaches you the word delicious, you can say, Oh, that sounds delicious. It helps make the words stick in your mind. Yes, using new words as soon as you learn them is key to remembering them. And you can also try to repeat what the other person says in your own words. This is called paraphrasing, and it's a great way to check if you've understood correctly. 
For example, if someone says, I had a great weekend, you could respond with, oh, you had a fun weekend. It shows that you're listening and helps you practice using different words. That's such a good strategy. Paraphrasing not only helps you practice new vocabulary, but it also gives the other person a chance to correct you if you didn't understand something. And that's a good thing learning from mistakes is one of the best ways to improve. Definitely, mistakes are a normal part of learning. And the more comfortable you are with making them, the faster you'll improve. In fact, when you make a mistake and someone corrects you, it's actually a great opportunity to learn. You can say, oh, thank you for correcting me, and then repeat the correct sentence. That's true, and sometimes repeating the correct sentence out loud helps you remember it better. For example, if you say something like, he go to the store, and someone corrects you by saying, he goes to the store, it's good to repeat it back. Oh, he goes to the store. This way, you're practicing the correct form and making it stick in your mind. Yes, repetition is powerful when learning a language. The more you repeat words and phrases, the more natural they become. And that brings us to another important tip. Don't be afraid to practice the same conversation topics multiple times. You don't always need to talk about new things. That's such a good point. Repeating similar conversations helps you get comfortable with certain words and structures. For example, if you practice talking about what you did over the weekend several times, you'll become more fluent in using the past tense. You can say things like, I went to the park, I saw a movie, or I met with friends. Repetition helps build fluency. Exactly, and even though the topics might be the same, every conversation is a little different because you're talking to different people or expressing yourself in new ways. Each time you talk about your weekend, you might use new words or ask different questions. It's all part of the learning process. Yes, and I think another helpful way to learn from conversations is to ask for feedback. If you're talking to a friend or language partner, you can ask them, how am I doing? Or is there anything I can improve? Most people are happy to give you advice and it helps you focus on areas where you can improve. That's a really good idea. Feedback is so important because sometimes we don't notice our own mistakes or areas where we can improve. And when someone gives you feedback, don't feel discouraged. Use it as a chance to learn and get better. Exactly. And sometimes feedback can be really simple, like correcting your pronunciation or helping you choose a better word. It's all part of the learning process. And speaking of pronunciation, I think it's helpful to talk about how conversations can improve your pronunciation over time. Yes, pronunciation is something that improves naturally when you practice speaking regularly. When you listen to native speakers during a conversation, you can pay attention to how they pronounce certain sounds or words. For example, in English, the TH sound can be tricky for some learners, but the more you hear it in conversation, the easier it becomes to imitate. That's a great example. And if there's a specific sound you're struggling with, you can focus on practicing that sound during your conversations. For instance, if you're trying to improve your R sound, you could make it a goal to use words with R, like write, run, or really, during your conversation. It helps to repeat those sounds in a natural context. Yes, and conversations also help you hear how words are connected. In English, we often link words together when we speak, so it doesn't always sound like separate words. For example, what are you doing? Might sound like what you're doing in casual conversation. Listening to these connections helps you understand spoken English better. That's so true. Sometimes English sounds very different when it's spoken quickly, but the more you listen and practice, the easier it becomes to understand. And when you're talking with someone, don't be afraid to ask them to speak more slowly if you need time to understand. Yes, you can always say, can you speak a little slower, please? If you need more time, it's perfectly okay to ask for that, especially when you're learning. And over time, You'll notice that you start to catch more words, even when people speak quickly. Exactly. And remember, conversations are also a chance to practice speaking naturally. 
You don't have to worry about speaking in perfect sentences all the time. Native speakers often use shorter or incomplete sentences when they talk, and that's normal. For example, instead of saying, I would like to go to the store, you might just say, going to the store. Yes, everyday conversations are much more relaxed than formal writing. So don't feel like you need to use perfect grammar in every sentence. Focus on being clear and getting your point across. If you're having fun and connecting with the other person, that's what matters most. Exactly. And as we keep saying, it's all about practice. The more you speak, the more natural it will feel. So, don't be afraid to start conversations, ask questions, and make mistakes along the way. Each conversation is helping you get closer to fluency. Now that we've talked about the importance of conversations, setting goals, using repetition, and asking for feedback, I think it's time to focus on one last essential element how to stay motivated and keep enjoying the process of learning English through conversations. Because let's be honest, James, sometimes it's hard to stay motivated when you're learning a new language, right? Absolutely. Learning a language is a long journey, and it's normal to feel frustrated or tired sometimes. But the good news is, when you're learning through conversations, it doesn't have to feel like hard work all the time. Talking with people should be fun. And that's something we should remind ourselves of language is about communication, connecting with others, and even having fun along the way. Yes, I completely agree. Conversations make language learning feel real. You're not just learning from a textbook or studying grammar rules you're using the language in real life situations. You're hearing the way people actually speak, and you're part of something interactive. That makes a huge difference in staying motivated. Exactly. And I think one of the best ways to stay motivated is to choose topics that are interesting to you. If you're talking about things you enjoy, whether it's sports, movies, food, or your favorite hobbies, it feels less like a lesson and more like a normal conversation. What do you think, Sophia? Oh, definitely. When you talk about things you're passionate about, the conversation flows more naturally. It doesn't matter what the topic is, as long as it's something that excites you. For example, if you love cooking, you can have conversations about recipes, ingredients, and even ask for tips on how to make certain dishes. That way, you're learning new vocabulary that's useful to you. Yes, it's so much easier to learn new words when they're related to something you already care about. And the best part is, when you talk about topics you enjoy, you're more likely to remember what you've learned because it's connected to your own experiences and interests. That's a great point. When we're emotionally connected to a topic, our brains remember things better. It's why you might forget a list of vocabulary words from a textbook, but you'll easily remember how to say the name of your favorite food or the name of your favorite singer in English. So, one of the best ways to stay motivated is to make your conversations personal. Exactly. Personal conversations make everything feel more meaningful. And another way to stay motivated is to track your progress. Sometimes, it's hard to see how much you're improving day by day, but if you look back over time, you'll realize how much you've learned. Keeping a language journal can help with that. Oh, I love that idea. A language journal is such a simple but powerful tool. You can write down the new words or phrases you've learned after each conversation and maybe even jot down how you felt about the conversation. Over time, you'll see how much you've grown and that can be really motivating. Yes, exactly. It's like having a record of your achievements. Even if you're just writing down one new word a day, it adds up over time. And seeing that progress can give you the motivation to keep going, especially on days when you feel like you're not making any progress. And along with tracking progress, I think it's also important to celebrate your small victories. Learning a language is tough, so it's important to recognize when you've done something well. Maybe you had your first full conversation in English without switching to your native language, or maybe you finally remembered how to use a tricky word. Whatever it is, celebrate it. I agree. Celebrating the little wins is key to staying positive. 
Language learning isn't just about reaching a big goal like fluency, it's about enjoying the small steps along the way. If you had a good conversation today, that's a reason to be proud of yourself. And the more you celebrate those moments, the more motivated you'll be to keep going. Exactly! And don't be afraid to reward yourself for your progress. It could be something simple, like treating yourself to your favorite snack or watching a movie in English to celebrate how much you've learned. Rewards help keep the learning process enjoyable and remind you that you're getting better each day. Yes, making the process enjoyable is so important. And that brings me to another tip for staying motivated, mixing things up. If you're always practicing conversations the same way, it can get a little boring, so try to switch things up from time to time. For example, instead of just having face-to-face -face conversations, you can practice with online language partners or even talk to yourself out loud in English when no one's around. That's a great idea, James. Talking to yourself in English might sound funny, but it's actually really helpful. It gives you a chance to practice speaking without any pressure. You can describe what you're doing, like, I'm making coffee, or talk about your plans for the day. It's a way to keep your mind active in English, even when you're alone. Yes, and it's also a great way to practice your pronunciation and speaking fluency. The more you practice speaking out loud, the more comfortable you'll feel when you're in real conversations. And don't forget about listening, too. You can listen to English podcasts, watch movies or TV shows, or even listen to music with English lyrics. The more you surround yourself with the language, the faster you'll improve. That's a really good point. Immersing yourself in the language is one of the best ways to keep learning, even outside of conversations. When you listen to English regularly, it helps you pick up on the natural rhythm and flow of the language. You start to notice how sentences are structured and how native speakers express themselves. Yes, and the more you listen, the more you'll understand how conversations work in English. You'll start to notice things like slang, idioms, and informal phrases that you might not learn from textbooks. For example, instead of saying, I'm very tired, you might hear someone say, I'm exhausted or I'm wiped out. Listening to real conversations helps you sound more natural when you speak. Exactly. And you don't have to understand every single word to benefit from listening. Even if you can only catch the general meaning, it's still helpful. Over time, your understanding will improve and you'll start to recognize more words and phrases. It's all part of the learning process. Yes, and that's why it's so important to be patient with yourself. Learning a language takes time, and there will be days when it feels difficult or frustrating. But if you keep practicing, keep having conversations, and keep surrounding yourself with English, you'll improve little by little. Absolutely! Patience and consistency are key. And remember, it's okay to have days when you feel tired or unmotivated. The important thing is to come back to it and keep going. Even if you can only practice for a few minutes each day, that's still progress. Yes, and I think the final piece of advice we can give is to enjoy the journey. Learning English or any language isn't just about reaching a destination. It's about all the moments in between, every conversation, every new word, every mistake is part of the process. So enjoy it, have fun with it, and don't be afraid to laugh at yourself when you make mistakes. That's great advice. Learning a language is like opening a door to new experiences, new friendships, and new opportunities. The more you enjoy the process, the more motivated you'll be to keep going. So, whether you're having a conversation with a friend, practicing with a language partner, or just talking to yourself in the mirror, remember to have fun and enjoy the journey. And with that, we want to remind you that learning English through conversations is one of the best ways to improve quickly. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner or intermediate learner, what matters is that you practice, stay curious, and keep talking. Every conversation is helping you get better. Yes, and we hope these tips have given you the confidence to start more conversations in English. Remember, the more you speak, the more comfortable you'll become.
So don't be afraid to start small, ask questions, and make mistakes. You're doing great, and every step you take is bringing you closer to fluency. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope this podcast has been helpful for you. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to our channel and share it with your family and friends. The more people practicing English, the better. Yes, we really appreciate you listening. And we hope you continue to use conversations to improve your English skills. Keep practicing, keep learning, and most importantly, keep having fun. Goodbye.